Do not be afraid. It is I, Gabriel, an angel of the Lord. A little more, come on, a little more. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a great honor it is for me to be here with you tonight in the great city of Cloverdale. Give it up for Cloverdale. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you're here with me tonight because I've been very busy. I'm a very busy angel, you know, delivering messages for the Lord. Fifteen months ago, he sent me to a man named Zachariah. Have you heard of Zachariah before? No. Well, let me tell you. The Lord sent me with a message. I said, absolutely, Lord, I'll be there right away. Zoom. I'm so fast. Faster than Amazon Prime. Zoom. I'm right there right away. And I said to Zachariah, do not be afraid. Didn't matter. He was terrified. Who can blame him? Look at me, this muscular build, strong bone structure, incredible hair. Anyway, I tell him, do not be afraid. And then I tell him, Zachariah. You are going to have a baby. No way, he said. You know what I said to him? Yahweh. <laughs> How come none of you are laughing? That's hilarious. Hold on a second. Let me see. I'm in Cloverdale, Canada. So you speak English and you speak a little bit of French, perhaps? Oui? No? Ah. But you probably do not speak Ibu. So sad for you. <laughs> because that means you don't understand that in Ibu, the name for God is Yahweh. So he said, No way. And I said, Yahweh. <laughs> no way. Yeah, ladies, some of you will have to explain it to your husbands later. The wheels are turning, but very, very slowly. No way, Yahweh. Anyway, so I said to him, Yahweh, but I said, since you did not believe the Lord, you're not going to speak again until the baby is born. Do you know what he said to that? Nothing. He couldn't speak. <laughs> I'm really on a roll tonight. You know, it's interesting with you. Uh, it's interesting with you human beings. You are so, you're so quick. To believe everything you see on TV, everything you read on the Google, but you're so slow to trust the Lord. Shame on you. Pardon, sorry, pardon me, there's just a little bit of chit chat up here on the front row. Pardon me, what's the problem? You, pardon, you don't think I am a real angel. <laughs> How many angels have you seen? <laughs> Probably more than you think. Anyway, so that was 15 months ago. Then, nine months ago, the Lord says to me, Gabriel, I have a message. I said, absolutely, Lord. I'm happy to deliver this message for you. That's what I do. I'm an angel. And so he says, go. And I was, zoom. How fast? Absolutely, so fast. You wouldn't believe it. Off I go. And then he tells me, this isn't just any message. No, this is the message. The message the world has been waiting for for thousands of years. Ever since Adam and Eve were in the garden and they ate that forbidden mango. You all think it was an apple. Tell who would disobey the Lord for a Granny Smith apple? Nobody, of course it was a mango. Those things are delicious. Ever since they ate that forbidden fruit, all since then, there's been this huge separation, this division between God and the people that he had made because God is perfect and holy and almighty. And you, not so much. Not anymore, not, before, not because of that mango anymore. Now you disobey God and you wander away and you get lost. And so God says, I will send a rescuer. And we wait and we wait and we wait. And finally God says, Gabriel, now is the time. Absolutely. Just like that, I'm gone. And I'm looking, I'm probably going to one of the great cities in the world, perhaps to Rome, or perhaps to Paris, or perhaps to Wally, British Columbia. But no, he says, you're going to Nazareth. Absolutely, Lord. I just have to look it up on my GPS, because no one has ever heard of Nazareth before. 
Anyway, I found it, and I think to myself, I must be going to a palace, or a castle, or a great big mountain. But no, in Nazareth, only the little tiny houses. One here, one here, one here, not very many even. And I think to myself, okay, I must be looking for a king, or a queen, or an emperor, or someone like that. But no, instead he tells me to look for Mary. Not rich, not famous, not influential, just ordinary Mary. Ordinary Mary, I'm just thinking of that now, and I really like the sounds of that. The angels are going to love it when I tell that to them. Ordinary Mary, it's got a little bit of a ring to it, doesn't it? Anyway, so there I go, and I find Mary, and I say to her, Do not be afraid! <laughs> Absolutely! You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. And I told her, Mary, you are going to have a baby, and you will give him the name Jesus, because you will save his people from their sins. And he will sit on the throne of his father David, and he will rule forever and ever. Do you know what she said to me? She said, I am the Lord's servant. Whoa! Such quiet faith from such an ordinary Mary. I couldn't even believe it. And so, for the last nine months, me and all of the other angels have just been watching and waiting because this was not going to be just any other baby. No, no, no. This was going to be the Lord. The Lord himself was going to come all the way from heaven down into this baby somehow. Incredible. And so we've been waiting, and we've been waiting, and we've been waiting. You know, when I first saw all of the other angels, they didn't believe me. I told them, yes, God himself is going to be in the baby. And they said, no way. And I said, Yahweh. <laughs> they laughed about that for hours. They all think I'm hilarious. Ah. You know, it's always been so surprising to us because we know that the Lord loves us, angels. Of course he does. Look at us. What's not to love, right? You know what I'm talking about. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Anyway, we know that he loves us, but he has always loved you so much. It doesn't even make sense to us because you all sin. You all mess up. You all turn away from the Lord, and still he loves you every single day. It's incredible. So, we're waiting, and we're watching Mary. And I said to the Lord, Lord, help me understand this one little thing. You are going to become one of them to save them. But how, how is this Jesus going to save all of the humans? Pardon me? Sorry, friends, there's a little more chit-chat in the front row. Ushers! You pay attention to the front row, they're causing a little bit of trouble. If this happens again, kick them out. What's the problem now? You think I'm saying amen incorrectly? You say it. Amen. You say it. Pardon me. H. Yeah, amen. Amen. Perfect. There, yeah, I said it perfectly. Thank you very much. As I was saying, thank you very much. As I was saying, how is the Lord going to save all of these people? And the Lord told me. He said, well, Jesus is going to be the perfect son of God. And he's going to perfectly fulfill all of the Ten Commandments. And he's going to perfectly always love his Father up in heaven every single minute of every single day. And he's going to perfectly love all of the people around him all of the time. And I said, oh God, that sounds just like something you would do because you're always so perfect. And then I said, how would that part save them? And he said, well, what will happen next is this. Jesus will be betrayed. Oh, Lord, I said. He said, Jesus will be arrested. Oh, no, I said. He said, Jesus will be nailed to a tree. He'll be crucified and he'll die there. And then I said, no, Lord. No, you're taking it too far this time. You love them too much. You're making a great big mistake. I will never let this happen. No, 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 no way. And God said, Yahweh. That, that is exactly what God was going to do for them. He was going to come and live for you. And he would die for you. 
and he would rise again for you. And that is how he would save his people from their sins. And I apologized to God and I said, I'm sorry, Lord. I am the Lord's servant. And now it's all happened. And baby Jesus has been born and he's laying there in the manger and he's doing all of those baby things. He is ooing and he's cooing and he's poo. Well, you know what I'm talking about. He's doing all of the baby things and everything is fine. But the Lord is telling me, even now, I need to get to Bethlehem to tell some uh, shepherds who are out in the fields nearby. We need to tell them. We have to tell people all over the place. And so I need your help because there are so many people for us to tell. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you, uh, children, Children, are you here? Children, would you help me? Are there no children here? Children, will you help me? I don't think I can hear you because there's so much hair in my ear. Children, will you help me? Yes. Okay. And ladies, ladies, would you help me? Yes. Excellent. And men, big burly men. Will you help me? What on? This is what I need you to do. I'm going to make you deputy angels. Angels are messengers, and I need your help. So I'm going to make you deputy messengers with me to help spread all the good news. Please, put up your right hand like this. And repeat after me. I state your name. I can see the wheels are turning, but it's so slow. My name is Gabriel. What is your name? When I say state your name, that's where you'll say your name, okay? Don't say state your name, that's crazy. Okay, raise your hand like this. I state your name. Have heard the good news. Jesus, the Savior has been born, and I will tell it. And when the world says no way, I will say Yahweh, because nothing is impossible with God. Okay, excellent. Now you're all my deputy angels. Pastor Ian, where did he go? Pastor Ian? Oh boy, I hope he's not falling asleep somewhere. Okay, Pastor Ian, you sing a few more songs with them, then you kick them out. They've got good news to tell. Merry Christmas, everybody!